All right, back to it now. Uh, a brand new report that just dropped in the Washington Examiner says an anti-Israel group linked to Democrat mega donor George Soros, you know him, of course, has made significant inroads in the Biden administration, boasting 60 White House visits since just 2021. That, according to the records reviewed by the Washington Examiner and the report written by Gabe Kaminsky. Gabe joins me now here in the program. Nice to have you back, sir. Um, this is pretty significant, to say the least. What can you tell us? Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve. I think this, uh, what we found at the Washington Examiner is that Engage, a group that uh, promotes the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, and also actually counts an attorney on its staff named Karud Wahim, who was reportedly placed on a federal terrorist watch list and has a track record of associating with organizations linked to the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, that organization has seen 60 of its leaders score meetings at the White House for high-level meetings since 2021. Uh, I mean, that's remarkable, 60 meetings. Meeting with, I would assume, the president along the way, maybe not in all 60 meetings, but in some of them, wouldn't you, wouldn't you guess? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, look, I think this is a really good window into how national anti-Israel groups have gained pretty large outsized influence in the Biden-Harris administration. Some of these meetings uh, we found have been with President Joe Biden. Others have been with other uh, notable officials. I would note uh, Brett McGurk on February 2nd scored a meeting with the CEO, or rather the inverse, uh, the engaged CEO, Wael Zayat a former State Department official in the Obama administration who has visited the White House 24 times under uh, Joe Biden. He, he visited with Brett McGurk, the Middle East National why, Security why Coordinator. Why does this keep on going on? I mean, this is the real question here, uh, Gabe. Why does it keep happening that this administration keeps turning its back on Israel, continues to voice its um, disgust, anger, and frustration with what's going on in Gaza and elsewhere while Israel is trying to clean up the terrorists have been running Gaza. Now that we have the West Bank, you have Hezbollah coming from the north. Why does this administration turn us back consistently on Israel? Is it because of George Soros and the money? <laughs> well, look, I, I'm not, I, I can't say why, but I can say this. It's very clear that there's a constant trend, and we've tracked this through our reporting, is that the administration keeps close ties to anti-Israel activists and uh, plays into a lot of the policy goals that they advocate for. So the Biden-Harris administration has been pushing for a ceasefire in the Middle East, including after six Israeli hostages were found under the tunnels of Rafah, southern city in Gaza. Oh, by the way, that same city in Gaza is the same city Biden has been urging Israel not to invade. So um, it's very clear that the administration has ties to these activists, and they've also pushed for policies as far as why we just want to make sure people are aware of kind of the funding systems in place that also help influence, um, you know, kind of those meetings and whatnot. Right. So, you know, look, as this is happening, we've got the backdrop of more violence on college campuses in America, too. I mean, it, it creates this whole atmosphere where Jewish students are, are afraid to go to school, where the American administration is not supporting Israel or Jewish causes in the Middle East, it seems. We're a long way from where we're supposed to be, aren't we? Well, look, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon because, yeah, we're heading into another fall here after very tumultuous times on college campuses in which heads of universities, Harvard, Penn, the uh, other, other institutions, they were booted, essentially booted off campus after failing to not only condemn anti-Semitism, but uh, not being able to say in congressional hearings, or specifically one in particular in front of the Education Committee, that, um, that uh, you know, terrorist supporters was the equivalent of anti-Semitism. Um, and so it's going to be it's going to be wild to see how a lot of this comes to a head and if the administration, if a future Harris administration is willing to condemn a lot of these same anti-Israel activists as they get more active, uh, you know, this fall. You know, it's interesting because here we are on the uh, eve of the big debate in Philly tomorrow. And there's no question. I mean, I talked to a lot of my Jewish friends that were Biden voters, that were Barack Obama voters. 
that have come to me and said, I will never vote for another Democrat in my life. The, the Democrats have thoroughly divided or maybe completely alienated the Jewish vote in America, and that's not critical in most states, but it is in some. The effective Jewish vote in Pennsylvania, for example, is 5%. percent they they're about three and a half percent of the population, but their effectiveness in the election is about five percent because they all vote. This could have significant uh, political impacts, all of it, and yet the Democrats seem oblivious to all of it as well. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, sure thing, Steve. I think the conflict could have a uh, notable impact and influence on the election, but it, it remains to be seen how much of the Jewish vote necessarily goes towards Trump, because it is true that a lot, most of the Jewish vote in America continues to be Democratic leaning and has long voted for Democrats. I think that stories like this, you know, uh, we're not telling people who to vote for or anything like that, but we're trying to ha make sure Jewish voters have the kind of information they do about uh, how the Democrats certainly have relationships with a lot of these anti Israel activists and how that could shape the policy on a country they care very much about. Yeah, agreed. Uh, great work. Uh, appreciate the, the digging that you're doing, Gabe, and please continue to come back and update us on these important stories. Gabe Kaminsky is an investigative journalist with the Washington Examiner. Gabe, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Happy to join anytime. Thank you so much. Um, it takes real work from real journalists like that, and there's not that many living in the wild anymore, you might be aware. Not that many journalists living in the wild anymore. Um, coming up in just a moment, uh, Joe Biden. This is a breaking story, by the way. Hell-bent on leaving Afghanistan. He ignored all the military advice, all the political advice. He was making his own my way to hell, as the, as the New York Post put it today. The New York Post, the, the, the front page today, my way to hell. Joe Biden refusing all advice on Afghanistan. I'll tell you about it after the break.